thousands of mysterious photographs are captured every year. The majority of these get solved by online users, but some of them go unanswered. One online user just posted this image to social media, asking users what they make of it, and whether they can identify it. The photograph was sent to an online group that focuses on mysterious objects, and also strange weather phenomena that gets captured around our planet, and they asked what this thing is that could be seen hovering above our moon. The user detailed that they had just purchased a telescope, and decided to get it out and look at the moon. Once they set it up they said they started running a program that helps photograph nearby celestial bodies, but said that they don't have the hang of it yet, and so decided to photograph the moon through their iPhone XS. The man said the following, I often skywatch, and decided that with the weather being nice I'd get out the telescope. I own a Celestron which is a pretty good telescope, especially if you just want to see the planets in our solar system. I have some great photographs of Jupiter, Saturn and the Moon. However, tonight I noticed that in some of the photographs there appear to be a large looking structure close to the Moon, something that I've never seen before while stargazing. It definitely wasn't something like a satellite, a planet or a meteor. All of these things move pretty quickly, especially things like planets when you line them up with the scope. Within a few seconds they've moved out of frame. If I had to guess I'd say that whatever this thing was stayed close to the moon for around 90 seconds. The majority of the photographs I took turned out blurry, but some of them were clearer than others. I'm not looking to start anything, I'm just wondering if anyone else saw this or has seen something similar. Again, this couldn't have been something like a satellite or a planet, as all these things would have moved out of frame within seconds. The photograph got the interest of online users, who started to give their opinions on what the man captured, with some saying that it could have been a smudge on the lens, or perhaps a drone, while others went down the route of saying that he captured an unidentified flying object, saying that every year people manage to capture mysterious looking crafts close to the moon. Other users said that they've seen strange things close to the moon, but didn't think much of it, writing it off as something natural. One thing that UFO researchers have said is that there's no shortage of these types of photographs, saying that every year regular people manage to capture strange things next to our moon. And what's interesting is that the majority of these people don't have an interest in this topic. They just manage to accidentally capture an interesting photo, and just want answers for what it shows. Unfortunately, as with most of these photographs and encounters, not much information can be gathered. But with each new photograph it does create an interesting discussion around the topic of UFOs, causing more people to go out there and do their own research. Back in 2015, NASA uploaded around 13,000 Apollo photographs online, but it didn't take long for amateur researchers to find some interesting anomalies in these photographs. One photograph that got shared on various websites was this one that was taken back in 1972. The photo in question was taken during Apollo 17, and shows the moon surface nearby hills in the backdrop of space. However, when online users zoomed in to one section of the photograph, they discovered some strange looking lines. Amateur researchers who first saw these said the lights in question were clearly in the shape of a triangle, and since being shared various UFO researchers came out and suggested that NASA was being watched while on the moon. The lights can be seen in the top right hand corner of the photograph, and when you zoom in you can see that the lights were blue in colour and in the shape of a triangle. UFO researchers have long said that strange triangle shaped crafts have been witnessed by humans for decades. However, amateur researchers that have looked into the phenomena have said this has been going on for a long time, saying that various photographs exist that show these strange triangle shaped crafts. 99% of the photographs shared though show these objects on Earth, so how do you explain this object hovering above the moon? One believer said the following, 
UFO researchers have done some incredible work in recent years, and this is one of the gems that's been discovered in some of the older NASA photographs that's been shared. There's no denying that this object is clearly triangular in shape. Whatever this thing is, it matches the very same objects that's seen on our planet. End quote. Other researchers who have spent countless hours looking at old NASA photographs have said this is some of the best proof we have of these crafts on the moon, and go on to say that usually NASA edits out these objects in their images, but in this case they likely forgot. This is one of the reasons why UFO researchers say the International Space Station is one of the best places to see UFOs, because it's really hard for NASA to edit out these crafts that come into the camera's view. So what they do is shut off the live cams claiming that the signal got dropped. Skeptics though don't buy into the idea that UFOs can be seen above the moon, and close to the International Space Station. Instead, they say the majority of these lights can be easily explained, and that what people are seeing is things like lens flares and other debris that make their way in front of their cameras. Even NASA themselves have said these objects that people call UFOs are just space debris, and when they get up close to their cameras, they can take on the appearance of a UFO. Stories about the paranormal interest many of us. For thousands of years, humans have talked about mysterious topics, and that humans may share this planet with something not quite human. The paranormal is a heavily debated topic, but if recent announcements have told us anything, is that even our best scientists and officials have shown interest in this topic, and sometimes have not been able to give an explanation for certain events. Although there's a wide variety of places that can be haunted, some of the most common ones are said to be that of cemeteries, old buildings or locations where something dark has happened. One location that's at the centre of a variety of stories is that of Oakland Cemetery, there's one particular reason why people tend to travel to this cemetery, and that's to see the large eight and a half foot tall black angel statue. Various stories have been shared about this location and the black angel, with some saying that it wasn't always black, and that although people have come in and scrubbed the angel, it will always return to its black colour. Locals and researchers who know the area well, reported that as soon as the statue arrived, Strange things started to happen, and the overall feel of the location changed for the worse. The story goes that Teresa Dozel had the statue created for her loved ones, but when she passed away this statue took on a different feel, with some amateur researchers saying that this is why the statue turned black, and that during her life she was a mysterious woman, with one tale going on to say that the Black Angel stands to protect her and that anyone seen disrespecting her will be marked. One claim states that the black colour originally started with the eyes, with some people noticing that they turned jet black overnight. After this, the rest of the body quickly turned black. After the angel turned black, it wasn't long before people started to notice that strange things started to happen. One story details that any girl who is kissed within the angel's shadow will pass away within six months. This theme has continued, with one tale stating that anyone kissing the angel will pass away that same day, and that anyone who touches the angel will be marked, and will live the rest of their life unhappy. Another claim is that only a girl who is pure of heart can kiss the statue and survive. There's been stories of people touching the angel as a dare, only for that individual to disappear, never to be seen or heard from again. In 2013, the TV show Haunted Highway went to the cemetery to do an episode on the Black Angel. While here, they detected various anomalies that they weren't able to explain. One of them was that of a mysterious voice, and also apparitions that could be seen around them. Next, they turned on their thermal cameras, only to discover that the Black Angel appeared to be glowing hot, Something that they couldn't explain as when they detected this, it was nighttime and cold. The Black Angel is said to be accompanied by a mysterious shadow figure, with investigators saying that on some occasions, it's not uncommon to see the shadow figure close to the statue. Some who've investigated this statue and the history around it 
have said it may be one of the family members and that they're protecting the area close to the angel, while others have suggested that the black shadow is a manifestation of the angel itself, and it does this so it can roam the cemetery freely. One person said the following about their visit to the cemetery. Me and my partner visited the black angel a few years back, and we certainly experienced our fair share of mysterious happenings. In one of the photographs I took of the angel, you can see in the background what looks like a dark figure. It wasn't actually me who saw it, but rather my partner once they were flicking through the images later that night. On top of this, the day after our visit, I woke up with a burning sensation on my back. When I asked my partner to take a look at it, he said there were three large scratches on my back. We don't have any pets and I can't explain how the cast randomly appeared. The only thing we did prior to this was visit the Black Angel. I know that the paranormal isn't for everyone, but for me, I believe that the scratches and the visit are linked. Others have gone on to tell similar stories, saying that when they got close to the angel, they suddenly felt a deep pressure in their chest, got an instant headache, and would even be hit with a sudden spell of nausea. As of today, people continue to visit and research the mysterious Black Angel. The Howard Street Cemetery is located in Salem, Massachusetts. Howard Street forms a T-junction with Brown Street, where the Salem Witch Museum is situated, so in terms of setting, the cemetery is already a spooky one. Set amongst period Gothic Salem architecture, the cemetery lies ominously on an open, flat piece of land that is extremely atmospheric under the correct conditions. A range in broken rows, many of the graves in Howard Cemetery dates back to the early 18th century. Amongst them are revolutionary heroes and sailors, but no witches lie in the ground of the cemetery, or at least this has never been verified. The site is said to have been the location of the execution of Giles Corey, a Salem farmer who famously refused to plead neither guilty, nor not guilty when charged with being a witch in 1692. Corey was left for days under the crushing weight of the rocks piled on his back, and eventually passed away. His remains is buried in the soil of what is now Howard Street Cemetery. Throughout the 15 and 1600, witch crazes and witch hunts were occurring all across the world, but although we know today that those accused of witchcraft are most definitely not witches, Giles Corey's story goes slightly against the norm. He allegedly placed a curse on the Sheriff of Salem, and a few years later the Sheriff suddenly passed away of a heart attack, although that could have been just a coincidence. However, strangely enough, over the years a number of Salem Sheriffs have been forced into retirement, and all suffered similar health issues often to do with the heart. It's widely noted that doctors haven't been able to work out why these sheriffs have suffered these specific problems, almost as if they are the work of the supernatural. Researchers involved in the UFO and extraterrestrial phenomenon have been struggling against active efforts of cover-ups and forced silencings from unknown forces since the rise of the field of study at the turn of the 20th century. From the threats made against Alfred Bender to shut down the International Flying Saucer Bureau after several years of its successful establishment, to the sudden expiration of whistleblowers, after some of them had come forward and admitted that the United States government had been working alongside extraterrestrial intelligences. The unknown forces at work that have continued their tactics throughout the years have been subtle and methodical in their strategies. That was until the expected release of the Calvin incident was delayed for declassifications for another 50 years, causing less subtle strategies to become far more obvious. According to experts studying unidentified flying objects and extraterrestrial encounters, the Calvin incident is considered to be the holy grail of UFO sightings, and its release into public access was a long-awaited moment for UFO enthusiasts. Scheduled for declassification on the 1st of January of 2021, the file reached the end of its 30-year classification guideline, 
a cause for the declassification of non-sensitive materials from the British Ministry of Defence after so much time has expired. One of our writers met Nick Pope a while back. Nick is an advocate for the alien awareness movement, and a UFO researcher who identifies himself as the James Bond of the alien world. He used to work for the British Ministry of Defence from 1985 to 2006, spanning more than 20 years of active deep state analysis of the extraterrestrial movement. According to Nick Pope, he had originally been made aware of the Calvin incident during his time working for a secret defence investigation team, tasked with studying the cause of the mass sightings of unidentified crafts across British airspace. It was during this initial study of the file that Nick Pope declared the file to hold some of the greatest evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial aircraft he'd ever seen, as the file contained several photos in high quality resolution that showed not only a dumb shaped UFO, but several military jets tracking the object in the sky. According to UFO researchers, the Calvin incident occurred over the Scottish Highlands on the 4th of August back in 1990. The story claims that there were two hikers travelling near Pit Lockery, with the area of the specific sighting having occurred in Calvine in Highland Perthshire. As they were hiking, they saw what is described as a large diamond shaped object, estimated to have been between 75 to 100 feet in diameter, and was hovering over the highlands for around 10 to 15 minutes. While the object was hovering and observing the area, the hikers took several high-quality photographs of the craft that depicted its outlines, its overall shape and its unexplainable design. The reason for why the design of the craft is unexplainable is due to lacking any form of known propulsion. The craft lacked wings, propellers, jet engines, blades or moving parts of any kind, and merely appeared to hover over the area while generating no sound whatsoever. As the two hikers continued to watch the massive craft, suddenly they witnessed British fighter jets come into view and begin circling the object. Whether or not the jets fired at the object is unknown. After the jets entered the nearby airspace, the diamond-shaped unidentified aircraft suddenly began to ascend vertically thousands of feet per second and immediately disappeared from view. One of the hikers would snap a total of six pictures of the craft and several of them showed the jets in view. Immediately following the incident, the British Royal Air Force would collect the witness statements from the hikers and their pictures to store in the Ministry of Defence file that was tasked with the study of the unknown craft. Researchers into the flying saucer phenomenon believe this response to be evidence of the MIB involvement, a secret deep state organisation tasked with not only covering up evidence of extraterrestrial aircrafts, but also to actively suppress stories from ever taking place. This men in black interference can be further corroborated by a Scottish newspaper, who first received the images and the negatives from the hikers for verification and study, only to find them having been completely stolen and removed from the possession after a journalist contacted the Ministry of Defence for a statement. Despite this overwhelming evidence of a cover-up having taken place, and interference from a secret deep state organisation, all government channels officially denied the event having taken place, claiming that not only was there no evidence of the Calvin incident, but that rumours of such photographs have never surfaced any such evidence, and had never existed in the first place, much to the disagreement of UFO researcher Nick Pope. The Ministry of Defence would later provide the statement that any reports, or witness statements related to unidentified flying objects, or flying saucers were deemed as being no defence significance. Meanwhile, Nick Pope would later provide a conflicting counter-argument, saying the following, We consistently downplay the true level of our interest in UFOs, while all the time behind closed doors we struggle to make sense of cases like the Calvin incident. Unfortunately, despite having seen the file in its entirety, and being made aware of what the photographs depict, Nick Pope is unable to comment any further about the incident, as it has been classified under the 30-year rule of the Ministry of Defence. Eagerly waiting for its declassification, 
Nick Pope had scheduled a number of public announcements and prepared statements on the matter to provide further information for the Flying Saucer research community. However, on the 1st of January of this year, the British Ministry of Defence would deny the declassification of the file, under the claim that its secrecy was a matter of national defence, and was provided with a 50-year additional seal. This means for UFO researchers that the file is not expected to be released until 2071. However, researchers are certain that even by that point in time, the file will only be delayed once again, and continue to be delayed until it's released indefinitely. Nick Pope has said that the deep state regulations encompass nearly every possible avenue of information. Even the two hikers who had supposedly witnessed the event back in 1990 have completely disappeared, with many researchers fearing the worst. Strauss Wilson remains hopeful that the witnesses will someday come forward, and has begun his own investigations into locating the two hikers. He would provide the following statement on the 50-year delay. The cover-up speaks volumes when the government does that. They're trying to hide something. It's one of the most important sightings in Britain, if not the world. The pictures must be quite significant. If only we could get the two hikers to come forward. Back then people might have been scared of the government, but I don't think they're scared now. No further information surrounding the incident is known and the whereabouts of the two witnesses remains a mystery. So what do you make of the Calvine incident? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.